I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust you are ready for a really geeky time as we get into all kinds of good things from the interwebs. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, this is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is netcast. I don't even know what number it is. Let me find out right quick. Oh, I can look right here. Netcast number 214. I have my tablet here and I looked over at my PC like, I've got to use my PC, but no, I've got my tablet. So, anyway, Netcast number 214. And we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Yes. All the strange and geeky things we're going to get into. It's just going to be such fun. All right. First item. Oregon testing voting by iPad. Earlier this week, in the week, earlier, on a Tuesday. Never could get the hang of Tuesdays. No, that's Thursdays. Never mind. Anyway. I know, I know. The official Hitchhiker's quote of the episode. Okay. Anyway. Oh, uh, what was I talking about? Yes. Voting. It was a boring time to vote, but some people did. I mean, you know, just saying. But anyway, in Oregon, they actually tested <clears throat> some people. <clears throat> the throat clearing shall commence. Some people voting by iPad as opposed to paper ballots. Dude, that's cool. Now, <clears throat> I had several people at work say, Oh man, no, you can't do that because after all, it will be hacked and their votes will be usurped. I guess that's a word, usurped. It's a word, I don't know if it fits. But anyway, um, so I don't know. You know, hopefully they have safeguards to keep that from happening. Uh, so, I, you know, but it's, it's techy and it's cool. So I thought I'd mention it. Just saying. So, let's look at something a little more, less controversial. Well, then again, everything's controversial if you want to look at it that way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> LibreOffice 3.4.4 final is out. Now, I said it wasn't controversial. There's a whole big controversy about what about OpenOffice? What about, you know, this? What about that? Well, fool you on all that. LibreOffice is cool because it is totally free. It is free of the corporate evil influence of the man. Know what I'm saying? Which is why so many Linux distros have embraced it with glee, as I have. Um, ooh, I hit something on my pad, my tablet, and it went wonky again. And it did it again. Quit doing that, he said to himself. <laughs> yes. Um, so, LibreOffice <laughs> 3.44 is out. And it is a final edition. It is a supported edition. It is a you-can-use-it-in-production edition. Good stuff. And it's got all kinds of good things. It's totally and completely, absolutely, and phenomenally free. No annual free fees, no software licensing, nothing to gunk up your world with requirements. Yes. All the, well, I won't say all, a large number of languages are supported and more are being added all the time. Um, it is a community-driven project. The roots of LibreOffice go back 20 years, has a long history. Thousands of users worldwide regularly take part in beta testing of new versions. Uh, it is completely open and extensively tested.
by security experts giving you security and peace of mind. I'm reading off their website, so it's you know promotional. But anyway, uh, simple to use yet powerful interface, easy to personalize. Did you know they even have themes? I didn't know they had themes, but they do. It's compatible with all major competitors' file formats. That would be Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, and you know even Open Office. Yes. Um, it is a worldwide community, and it's just awesome. So that's all the stuff about LibreOffice. I would encourage you to check out LibreOffice. And now, a word from our sponsor. Yes. And that is, of course, Citrix Systems. Citrix Systems go-to meeting with HD faces. Now, this screen, let me, let me try to come here. From the corner here all the way up, boy, I'm having to do it backwards, all the way to the top up here that is 16 by 9 HD now HD is awesome and I like high definition video and you can have that in your meeting with all of your participants assuming they have an HD webcam and they connect through go to meeting with HD faces it's the better way to have a meeting you don't have to jump on a plane and fly across country and get on a, in a rental car and go to a hotel and then go to your meeting and then uh, do it all again and come home. Not a lot of fun. But you sit down at your computer, you can have your meeting, you can discuss things, you can share screens, you can do all kinds of things. So, you can get in on a free 30-day free trial by using the special URL right here Go to meeting.com with the special podcast keyword, podcast. Enter that, and you can get a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Awesome. Okay, let's look at the next item. The next item is Tegra 3 CPU is five times faster than the Tegra 2. Now, this is cross-posted from the handheld hack. Handheld device. The handheld hack, of course, is our other video netcast and blog at handheldhack.com. So this was posted there and then I cross posted over here to remind myself that I needed to talk about it, which is what I'm doing now. Um, NVIDIA has the Tegra 2 processor, which is what's in this device, a dual processor CPU, and they now have a quad core. Can you imagine a tablet with a quad core? Dude! It is codenamed Kal-El. I like that. It's all super many. You know what I'm saying? I think they're talking about how powerful it is. Um, dude, a quad-core tablet. I just that's just totally cool. Totally cool. Now, I have a lot of distro news for Linux that I'm going to talk about. But first, I want to do a little catch-up. I'm going to look over here to my PC where it is reminding me that some time back I talked about uh, a Geek Software of the Week that came from Gitjar. G-E-T-J-A-R. I'll put the URL right here. Gitjar. And I made the offhand statement that many of their apps are free. Well, they tweeted me on the old Twitter and they <laughs> reminded me that all of their apps are free. And I like the fact, first of all, that they're watching the show. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, but <laughs> I also like the fact that they provide their apps for free. That's the cool thing about people on the internet sharing the joy, sharing the technology, sharing all of these things which are so beneficial. So kudos to you guys at Gitjar. Dude. Okay. Just wanted to share that. Been meaning to do it for a long time, but I keep forgetting. So I made notes over here on my PC. Yes. I know, I'm getting organized. What can you say? Anyway, I also wanted to remind you that my son, the Game Master, this weekend is playing Skyrim all weekend long. Yes. Now, there's a story behind that. He wanted the PC version because of its very P PC orientation. He was used to the controller that he had through the PC. And so he wanted to play it through his PC. Plus, there were some features and things he wanted to take advantage of. And his PC wasn't quite up to it. When we got home with the game, he started playing, and his screen was like, rah, 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 rah. 
couldn't handle it. So it's going to be time for him to get an upgrade for his PC, like I did recently for my PC, which I really am totally appreciating. Might have gotten to the point it was just it's another story. Anyway, the point is he needs an upgrade, but he couldn't get it this weekend. He was all geared up to play this weekend. So, yes, we went out and got the PS3 version so that he could play. And now he's downstairs in his realm. He has a realm downstairs in the house. He owns the entire downstairs. They don't even go down there. Probably a good thing. Anyway, so he's being the game master. So I would watch his YouTube site, Game Master ZX. And um, I don't, I'll put the URL up here so that you can go there. But he has walkthroughs and he has all kinds of things. And he's, he'll be able to record off the PS3 and I'm sure he'll Skyrim you. Yes. Okay. So, here's the item I was headed for. Red Hat releases Fedora 16. Now, I like Red Hat. See the Red Hat back here, right there, above Tux? Yes, I like Red Hat, and I, I administer Red Hat as one of my responsibilities at work at High Point Regional Health System. There's the High Point Regional CD case right there. See, I just, I get these things on the screen. I just wanted you to see that I was doing it on purpose. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I administer Citrix, VMware, and Red Hat to a certain degree. I'm, I'm not a primary on on Linux, I'm just a backup, but I still work with it some. And you know, boy, I'm digressing here, but bear with me. Uh, VMware originally was built on top of Red Hat, and uh, they now with ESXi, it is a, a lot more customized. But at any rate, Red Hat's cool. That's the bottom line is, is I like Red Hat. And uh, I specifically, personally, for my servers, I use CentOS Linux, which is Red Hat with all the uh, trademarks stripped out. But it's the exact same code, so it's exactly compatible with Red Hat. And that's what I use for my servers personally, okay? So, uh, so all the websites that you see from Dr. Bill, uh, and actually drbillbailey.net, I'll get into that a little bit later, uh, are all coming off CentOS servers. So, cool. But, I haven't used Fedora that much. That is really their cutting edge desktop distro. Which can be hard to say unless you really concentrate. Which is what I'm doing. I'm concentrating. So, they released it though. It came with GNOME, or GNOME, depending on how you want to pronounce it, 3.2, and virtualization enhancements. It is codenamed Vern. Hey, Vern! <laughs> Old commercial, never mind. Uh, and it has support for Aeolus and the OpenStack Infrastructure as a Service IAAS platform. It also upgrades the Techie Focus Linux distribution to Linux 3.1 and moves it to the Grub 2 bootloader and Firefox 7.0.1. Yes. So anyway, Fedora 16. Now, there's a guy at work, Bruce, hey Bruce, who uses Fedora on his work PC, his notebook at work. And then he uses a view session, a VMware view session, uh, for anything that he needs to do with Windows 7. So he has a Windows 7 VMware view session that he connects to from his Fedora uh, desktop, which is cool. I think that's really awesome. And eventually, I may do that, except I'll be using Ubuntu on my notebook. Matter of fact, I already have uh, Ubuntu on my work notebook, but I dual boot between Windows 7 and Ubuntu. So what I've been doing, this is what I've been doing. When I come home for the weekend, like right now, as I record this, I am running Ubuntu on the notebook for all of my computing goodness. So I'm weaning myself off of Windows. And I'm, I'm trying to find all of the software that I need to actually totally convert to Windows and get completely away from Microsoft. Yes, a noble cause. 
I'll tell you more about that as we go through the exercise to get that done. Oh! Yes, indeed! You know, I'm getting better at that not shocking me quite so much. So, the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... GRC's Domain Name Speed Benchmark. That's a long name, but it's what it is. Now, GRC is Gibson Research. That's Steve Gibson's company, and Steve is awesome. He is like a super coder. He, he codes in a simile language right down there where the bits and the bytes really live. You know what I'm saying? And tight, tight code. So all of his software is extremely small, extremely tight, and very useful. And he's also a security expert. Dude. You ought to listen to the Security Now podcast, Netcast, sorry, sorry, Netcast, because it's a part of the Twit Network, which is all Netcast, and, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. But he has this software that we're trying to talk about this software here, Geek Software of the Week, which is, have you ever wondered why your network, your internet networks might seem so slow? It's because you type in whatever it is, domain.com, and you hit your return key and it goes, eh, and just kind of locks up. <laughs> and you're going, why is the internet so slow? Well, it's not the internet, silly. It's the domain name server, DNS. It's got to go out and say, what is that that he's trying to go to? And what is it really on the internet? And oh, by the way, here's the IP address back, and now you can go to it. So if your DNS is slow, your whole internet will seem slow. So what you want to do is you want to get a fast DNS. Now most people don't even know about their DNS. They could care less. They just have whatever DNS their ISP set up for them, which is fine in most cases. But if you really want a super fast DNS, you need to find out if your DNS, first of all, is up to speed. <laughs> up to speed, get it? <laughs> and Somebody told me on, t on Twitter that my humor was rather dry. Maybe that's why my throat gets dry. No, probably not. Anyway, it's probably the dry air. But, what was I saying? Oh yes, DNS. I get distracted. DNS, you need a fast DNS. So, let me read you what it says about this. It says, GRC's DNS benchmark performs a detailed analysis and comparison of the operational performance and reliability of any set of up to 200 DNS name servers, sometimes also called resolvers, at once. When the benchmark is started in its default configuration, identifies all the DNS name servers the user system is currently configured to use and add them, adds, them, adds them to its built-in list of publicly available alternative name servers. Each DNS name server in the benchmark list is carefully characterized to determine its suitability to you and for your use as a DNS resolver. This characterization includes testing each name server for its redirection behavior, whether it returns an error or a bad domain request or redirects a user's web browser to a commercial marketing-oriented page, in other words, where it fishes you off to somewhere else. While such behavior may be acceptable to some users, others may find this objectionable. That's me. I find it objectionable. When the benchmark is run, the performance and apparent reliability of the DNS name servers the server is uh, the system is currently using, plus all the working name servers of the benchmark's built-in list of alternative name servers are compared with each other, and the results are displayed. Cool! So it's good stuff, and it's geeky. I mean, it's highly geeky. So download it, run it, and see if your DNS is up to snuff. Blah. Snuff. I've seen people who dip snuff and it's really disgusting. Blah. Bad habit. Don't do it. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it's an expression. You know what I'm saying? Up to snuff. It's an expression. All right. Next item. Logitech lost tons of money on Google TV. You remember Google TV? Neither do I. <laughs> I never really messed with Google TV. But apparently it was a bust. And Logitech supplied the hardware and tried to sell it. And everybody went... <laughs> know what I'm saying? 
Okay, so they lost tons of money. It says Logitech is halting production of its Google TV review. That was the brand name, review. Set top boxes acknowledging that the whole affair was a financial disaster for the company. Dude. Now I I kind of I kind of heard heard a rumor that Google is thinking about revamping Google TV. So maybe they'll get it right this time. Now for me personally, I like the Roku box. Roku's awesome. I was, matter of fact, telling a guy at work, Rich, we, we were talking about it. Roku, dude, you can play Angry Birds on the new Roku. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> but you can also get all kinds of cool stuff, Netflix, and, and of course, uh, Tech Podcast Network, and Blueberry, and even iTunes. I mean, all kinds of good stuff you can get, you know, video, netcast, and so forth, through the Roku box. Revision 3 programs like Techzilla, dude, awesome stuff. Anyway, Tom's Top 5, another good one. I just, uh, those are really the ones I watch. I watch Techzilla, Tom's Top 5, Hack 5. What is it with the fives? Anyway, five fingers on my hand. Uh, well, there are. Um, 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 what else do I watch? Oh, the Ben Heck Show. I like the Ben Heck Show. So there's several things that I watch through Revision 3. At revision3.com. Check it out. But particularly on the Roku box. And by the way, if you want a Roku box, dude, go to my website, click on the Roku ad there, and go buy yourself one. They're inexpensive. And if you click through my site, it'll help me out. And you want to help me out, don't you? Please. Anyway. Next item. Yesterday... Today is 11 12 11, which means yesterday was 11 11 11. Blah, 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 blah. 11 11 11. I love it. Anyway, do you know that yesterday there was an 11 11, in other words, 11 hour, 11 minute, 11 second on 11 11 11? <laughs> okay. That's a little overboard, but still. Anyway, Jeffrey Powers, who of course does Geekazine and is a tech podcaster himself, he tweeted out for, uh, well actually no, he Google Plus, I'm sorry, he Google Plus it and then I retweeted out that for some you have already celebrated, but I wish you all a happy 00110001001 and so forth and so on and so forth and so on. And he spelled out 111111 11, 11 in binary. Spelled out? Numbered out? Whatever. Anyway, it's very geeky. Mashable, which is another website, went on to say, one group of hackers has dubbed it the Nerd New Year. I like that. They'll be lining the streets of Redwood City in the heart of Silicon Valley for an outdoor hackathon and party, including the countdown to the Nerd New Year itself at 11, 11 p.m., has to be at night so they can party on, dude. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, it is on, said organizer Adam Rifkin. That's a, bi that's a binary joke. You know what I'm saying? You know, one is on. Get it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and now the last item. You're going, <sighs> finally. No, I hope not. Anyway. This item is that Linux Mint, another distro, Linux Mint 12, also codenamed Lisa, uh, release candidate, came out this morning, as in 11.12 as I record this. Today, this is hot news, and the distro is very, very impressive. Now, it's based on Ubuntu, which is a positive in my book. It comes with a brand new desktop. It's built with GNOME 3, or GNOME 3, depending on how you want to pronounce it again. You know, it's, it's up to you. It's a free country. You can, you can pronounce it however you want to. I get close, though, so people know what you're talking about. Just saying. Anyway, and MGSE. MGSE is the Mint GNOME Shell Extensions. R. Extensions are. Extension is language. It's just so fuzzy. Fuzzy. Anyway. Just just a weird 
segue there. Uh, so, the main features are the bottom panel. Your main feature is the bottom panel. Okay. The application menu, the window list, a task-centric desktop. You can switch between windows, not applications, which allows you, I should say, to switch between windows, not applications. Visible system tray icons. Okay. Uh, as opposed to invisible, but I'm just being silly now. Uh, it also has a mix of old and new. Uh, it is a, it has Mate, M-A-T-E, which is a fork of GNOME 2, which is compatible with GNOME 3. Thanks to Mate, you can run both versions of GNOME on the same system. Okay. Uh, let's see, it also has artwork improvements. It has new backgrounds, including all kinds of fantastic photographs from India and Yellowstone National Park. That's cool. It has search engines. Now, this is interesting. You can put the default search engine, which in the distro as it comes, is on DuckDuckGo. There's a search engine called DuckDuckGo. It's at DuckDuckGo.com. I'll put it right here. It's a very minimalist uh, search engine. But the cool thing is, is it doesn't track or record user information, provides you with optimized results. Everybody sees the same results. They're not... They're not tweaked just for you. So, you know, sometimes if you tell somebody, search by this and you'll see this link, and then they go, I don't see that link. That's because Google is tweaking it just for you personally, which can be confusing if you're trying to tell somebody to go look at a link. You know what I'm saying? So DuckDuckGo doesn't do that. It's just plain old, plain old search engine. And it, uh, as I said, doesn't track record user information, so that's good from a security point of view. And uh, it is completely built on and contributes to open source. So I went and tried it and looked at it. It's interesting. You should look at it. It has a little rubber ducky dude. Duck, duck, go. So a very geeky search engine. Will it beat out Google? Not likely. But it's interesting. But Mint allows you to switch out your search engine very easily. And it, by default, it comes on duck, duck, go. Okay. Upstream components, it features Ubuntu 11.10 and Linux 3.0 and GNOME 3.2. So, there it is in a nutshell, this week's official Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon or drbill.tv show. Yes. So, go to the website drbill.cc. Click on all the links. And oh, by the way, did I forget to mention? I think I did. Wait a minute. That wasn't the last item. I'm shocked. I'm perplexed. I'm also not on the right page. <laughs> Let's go back there. Uh, yes, there is another item that I blogged just before doing the netcast. I'm just shocked. It's a boring one, though. <laughs> Sorry. And that is about drbillbailey.net. I know about it, so I'll leave the tablet over there on the desk. I'll just tell you. drbillbailey.net is, of course, the company that produces this netcast. Now, really, drbillbailey.net is me. Okay? I have no one else other than my wife, Belinda, who works with the company... I do a little consulting on the side, and I do some other web stuff on the side, and she helps out with all the, the hard stuff like the paperwork, and the finances, and the stuff, and the billing. You know, she does all the, the parts that are no fun. So bless her heart, I appreciate that. But I get to do all the geeky fun stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> Dr. Bill Bailey got next bit around for a long time, long time. A very long time. Anyway, prior to being drbillbailey.net, it was Bailey Information Technology, B-I-T, Inc. The only problem was, so the IP or the uh, URL was bitinc.com. Well, the pro, which is gone now, it's no longer exists. Uh, but actually, I gave it to somebody else, so it may exist, but I gave it away. Anyway, the problem is, I never got incorporated. There was never really a need to get incorporated. So. Actually, my wife, 
my tongue jumped out and attacked my mouth. Anyway, my wife and I were talking one day, and we were talking about the fact that ink made no sense, and she said, well, you know, it's just you. And I said, yeah, it's me, Dr. Bill Bailey. Dot net, because I'm a network provider, like a web host. So I registered dot net, dot org, dot com. All the Dr. Bill Bailey's, including like maybe even info, I registered. I do that. Anyway, the point is that my, my home base is drbillbailey.net, and that's where all the netcasts are produced from. So, when Google Plus recently, you, you knew I was headed somewhere with this, Google Plus recently came out with the ability to have your company have a page in Google Plus, so I created a drbillbailey.net Google Plus page. So join me there, become a follower, and in the meantime, I'll try to figure out what to do with it. Because I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I just wanted to mention that so you could go to Google Plus and join me at drbillbailey.net. Yes. And also go by drbillbailey.net, the actual website, because there's stuff there too. So anyway, until next time. Boy, I got into a lot of stuff there. Until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.